Right. Um, let's move ahead, students. Having understood the difference between primary and secondary uh, sources of data collection, let's move ahead now to uh, various methods of collecting the primary data. You remember, students, primary data being original in nature, first-hand information as such, right? Now, one of the most uh, premium method, or rather I should say the method which is most convincing method is direct personal investigation. Now, what happens in this method, students? Uh, let me quote an example, students, if you can understand it better. Uh, we are talking about COVID-19, which is a pandemic affecting each and every country. But few years back in Kerala, if I am not getting it wrong, this virus, Nipah virus as such, came into its, um, its prominence. And in certain cities and villages of Kerala, it affected uh, quite a bit of households. But remember, it did not spread students. In fact, I let you let me tell you, it has a far more fatality rate. That means the death rate of the people infected than COVID-19. So pretty dangerous virus it was. So what the government did, right, it made it a point that the team of officials will visit every household, right, and try to inquire about various symptoms as well as the you know the impact as such which a patient is suffering directly they can't take it but from the other members of the household and try to collect the information so that an impact can be limited and some real degree of assessment can be done on how to control it which was controlled and how to make its impact not come again and again repeatedly over a period of time. So door to door interview were taken of the households. The patient representative came and informed that these were the symptoms. Detailed questions were asked so that the government can make use of such information and accordingly come up with some data which will be helpful for future tackling of such diseases. Now remember this is primary data because it is originally collected. Clear? First hand information. But because it is collected through an interview by meeting the patient or its representative directly as such, such type of information is what you call it as direct personal investigation. It's not a phone call where we are trying to inform, get the information. We are trying to get the information by seeing the body language of the person concerned as well as trying to make things absolutely come across whether the person is answering the questions to the expected level of our understanding or not. So as an observer, you can easily gauge whether the correct information is provided just by checking the body language of the person concerned. Right? Now, point to be noted when such methods should be used as such. First and foremost, uh, if the area is limited to be covered, I think then it's a better option to be going for finding out the information. Because when it spreads on a big way, then it can take a heavy toll on any agency to cover up such information. I'm talking about a disease, it can be, but if it's a business information, primary data on a large scale, it's asking way too much. So limited area. Uh, a better option right then if good quality information is required am i clear with good quality information that means uh, intense study of the topic under consideration is required then this method is very suitable and you want to have original information as well as reliable information i think originality with reliability is going to be a very good feature if you follow this method of collecting the primary data. I hope all of you are understanding it. So primary data, when it is suitable, mark it down, it is suitable, this primary data method rather, direct personal investigation, suitable 
when the area is generally on the limited side, intense study is required of the subject, and you want to collect original and reliable information. Thank you.